Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here. Today I'm super excited because I'm going to be showing you guys the Angara Exemplar, which is a brand new class in Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer. This came out with patch 1.8, and yes, this motherfucker is incredible. One of the best classes in the entire game, and absolutely the combo king. I talked about the Asari Sentinel was the combo queen. Well, this guy is absolutely the combo king. And personally, I'm starting to now think that the Krogan Engineer is the combo queen, because technically the Krogan Engineer is a female, and they have buffed all the Krogans, and it is incredible. I really do like this new patch. It's just like the last patch. It's not as big as the last patch, but it definitely does the things I've been complaining about. It's like Bioware. You guys listen to me. I don't know what's going on here, but the things I like to talk about in my videos and bitch about, it's like they then go and fix it. So maybe everyone is also complaining about the same things, I'm not exactly sure, but this new class is incredible, and if you don't have this new class, I feel sorry for you, and I hope that you can unlock it as soon as possible, because this shit is ridiculous. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started with the build. Now, for the weapon, it really doesn't matter that much. You don't really need your gun on this build all that much. Yes, you want to shoot enemies and you want to kill them like that, but the only thing I recommend is to use a gun that can set up extra combos like fire explosion with incendiary ammo. So the Hurricane is an excellent choice for that. If not, the Equalizer, the PAW, the Shadow, whatever you have, or any assault rifle that can actually set up an explosion with your ammo type really quickly is good for this build so that's what i would recommend so don't worry too much about the weapon because the amount of combos you can do with this build is incredible so the weapon is not all that important as long as it can set up extra combos with the ammo that's all that matters for the equipment 100 percent use the engineering kit because this will boost all your tech damage by 30 percent now for the booster, I 100% recommend using some type of ammo. It can be level 1, it does not matter. I personally would recommend the incendiary ammo for the fire explosions, but if you don't have that many of the incendiary ammo, you can always use disruptor ammo or cryo ammo. I'm not a big fan of cryo ammo, so I personally don't really like to use it, but incendiary ammo works well against pretty much everything besides maybe the Kev, and that's it. So if you're fighting against them, you might want to use disruptor ammo. But for everything else, incendiary ammo is extremely good. Now the second booster is not all that important because you don't really need to boost your power damage or your weapon damage. It's really not crucial. But if you do have a bunch of tech power amps, you can use them and it will improve the build because your powers will do more damage, not your combos. But if the powers do more damage, it's more likely you're going to kill enemies with your combos. Now, let's get into this fucking build. Unfortunately, this motherfucker is ultra rare, and because of that, there's a good chance that a lot of people might not have this new class. And that's really, really stupid, but at the same time, this is a unique class with some unique stuff going on, and that's generally what an ultra rare is all about. They have something that no one else has, and this motherfucker is no exception to that. Now, first of all, you have Barricade, Energy Drain, and Overload. Overload is a wonderful, one of the best powers in the game. Energy Drain is great. Barricade, not so much. Like, you could maybe fuck around a little bit with Barricade, but in my personal opinion, I never use it. If you have a maxed out card, which will take forever, but if you do get to that point, I would definitely say leave Barricade at 1 and max everything else out. If you have a really low card, I think the most important thing that you want is you want to get a little bit in the overload and you definitely want to get energy drain to at least evolution 5 because that's where energy drain can set up and detonate explosion and that is really really important now when it comes to the unique ability which is the training that one you definitely want to get to 6 100 percent you got to get that to 6 it's really important the fitness is also somewhat unique and if you can get away with it, I would say that getting to the Evolution 5 is really good. But if you can't make it there, it's not a big problem. You can go ahead and say fuck it. So if it's a low card, you definitely want to go ahead and get some points into Overload. Definitely get to Evolution 5 for Energy Drain. 100% max out your training and then put the rest of the points into the fitness and see where it goes. So let's go ahead and get started. My card level is 4. I definitely want to max this motherfucker out, but at the same time, I feel like this new Angara is just like the Salarian Operator. 
it's not crucial to max the card out. Yes, it's good if you can do that, but even at a low card level, this build is incredible, and it's definitely one of the best in the game, and it's deserving of being ultra rare, which is something that's really rare for me to say, because fuck, I hate ultra rares, because I think it's bullshit that you can't max out the build. But let's go ahead and get started with this, and we're going to first talk about Overload. Now, the first thing is, I recommend damage, okay? Now, normally, I would recommend recharge speed, but with this build, recharge speed is not actually that all that important. Damage is a little bit better because you're going to do a little bit more damage and more likely to kill enemies doing combos and stuff, so it's nice. Now, if you can put more points into Overload, my personal recommendation is to go for Anti-Shield and then go for EMP. The reason why I say this is because... What this is going to do, this is just going to take down shields like guaranteed. I never charge Overload with this build. You're able to spam your power so much that if you actually take the time to charge Overload, it's kind of like a waste of time. Yes, you're going to hit multiple targets. It can be good. But I normally just use Energy Drain. Then I use Overload. I'll shoot some enemies. Then I just do it again. And I just keep doing that over and over again. So my personal recommendation if you're going to play this build is don't really charge overload. You can if you like, but because I don't see myself charging it, I definitely see myself going for the anti-shield ability with this power. And that's why it's not important to actually max it out. Like if you can just leave it at four, that's fine. It's not a big problem. Barricade leave at one. For energy drain, it's the same thing. Go for damage and shields restored. You don't really need the recharge speed, although it is nice. The next thing that is super important is Extended Drain. This is going to prime targets and allow it to set up explosions. Now the final one I normally go for is Team Drain because I'm a team player. I like to help my allies and I also like to restore my shields even further. This build can be a little squishy. That's the only downside to the build. Sometimes you can get wrecked really quickly. So having Energy Drain and being able to restore your shield fully is actually really nice. I don't really like the damage on it. But this is another one that it's not super important to get this. If you can't get this, it's not a big deal. It's not a deal breaker. This build is still fantastic, even if you have energy drain at just five. Now for the training, this is the unique shit that makes this build incredible. First thing is, and I'm going to talk about right now, your tech combos will actually prime targets in the damage zone. So what that means is you cannot get two explosions on the same target so you set up one guy in a group of enemies you blow him up and then anyone in that group it's kind of like the tech explosion where it leaves that little field and then if they walk into it they'll be stunned well anyone who walks into that will now be primed so if someone else hits that motherfucker with a combo that will detonate or if you have your recharge and you can go ahead and hit that other target you will detonate and it's really, really good. So definitely, this is nice. I don't see this effect when I'm just running around by myself too much because you're by yourself. You're the one doing the combos. But if you are with a team, you will see this effect all the time. If you're using like a combo team, this perk is incredible. You will get so many explosions and it will just feed into your recharge speed and you're able to spam so many powers. This motherfucker is kind of like the human kineticus of tech i mean i'm fucking serious you have to see this to believe it now i'm really conflicted on this one which is either power recharge speed or power damage now earlier with overload and energy drain i went for the damage so i was thinking about doing that here but i do like the recharge speed just in case you fuck up sometimes you might fuck up you won't be able to actually detonate a combo, and you're not going to get your really crazy fast recharge speed. So if you fuck up, this will actually help you out because it's going to let your powers come back quicker, and that's nice. And then you can start doing the crazy shit that this build can do. Next up, definitely 100% bonus damage to shields and combo damage. You're going to be doing a ton of combos. You want the combo damage. The tech explosions aren't that powerful, but they have a lot of stunning potential. The fire explosions that you can do with incinerating ammo are very powerful, and they will kill enemies because of this bonus damage. Now, this is the most important fucking thing. Let me say right now, this is fucking broken, okay? This does not work the way that it says it works, and it's so much better, man. Oh my god. When I first started using this, me and my friend, who was also using this build, we were flipping the fuck out because we were trying to figure out how exactly does this perk work. 
because what it says is that if you kill an enemy with a combo detonation, it causes all your active powers to recharge faster. And that's 50%, which is really good. Guess what, guys? You don't need to kill them with the combo detonation. As long as you inflict an enemy with a combo and then they die, it doesn't matter if you kill them with your gun, if your teammates kill them with their guns or their powers, you will get this perk to trigger and you will have 50% recharge speed. Guess what? This can also stack. I have had this fucking trigger multiple times. That's the only thing I can think of, is that it is stacking. So sometimes I'll get like 150% recharge speed, and in like a half of a second, I get all my powers back. And then I cast my powers again, get another explosion, or I detonate my friend's explosion, whatever the fuck, and it's fucking crazy. If you have a combo team, this actually will feed off of the other people. So if they detonate your combo, this triggers. If you fucking detonate their combo and then the enemy dies, that's the only thing that matters. The enemy has to die. So if you shoot that enemy, if you blow that enemy up, or if you kill them with the power, it does not matter how they die. As long as they die, you get the 50% power recharge. And I don't know exactly how it stacks, but sometimes you will notice and you will see it in the gameplay. My powers are coming back so fucking fast. And other times they're coming back pretty fucking fast. And sometimes they're not coming back all that fast because I fucked it up and I didn't actually do my combo properly. But as long as you're doing it right, you have like insane power recharge speed. That's why you don't need recharge speed all that much. You really just want power damage because it's going to help you. Now the fitness is good for one reason. It's pretty much the same as all other Ngaras. I like to go for the regeneration. You don't really need to worry about the delay reduction. You have energy drain, but the health regeneration is nice. I do like that. Also, if you want, you can get the movement speed and the damage resistance while invading. So this is something you can do. It's up to you. Now the rank five on the other hand is extremely good for two reasons. First of all, you get power restoration, which is nice for energy drain. It's going to get more of your shields back. But the main thing is you actually get 20% recharge speed. What the fuck, man? Seriously? Like, that's fucking awesome. So this will play in with your training and you will have a passive recharge speed of 55%, which will definitely help out if you ever fuck up with your combo. But once you get your combos going and the enemies are dying, your recharge speed is so fast at that point, you're pretty much like a human Kineticus. So it's really not a big deal. But this is a really nice perk. If you can't get this though, it's not a deal breaker. It's not the end of the world. So don't worry about this perk if you have a really low card level. But once you get like card level 4, you can get this perk no problem and it's not a big deal. Now if you can get it, I would probably say the ward is pretty good. Maybe you could skip out on this if you want. Fuck around maybe with barricade or something. But this is actually a pretty decent perk. And of course, that is only for people who have their card pretty much maxed out. So if you are one of those people who play the game a lot and you might be able to unlock this motherfucker or you had like 30 million credits saved up or whatever the fuck it was, yeah, you can go ahead and maybe max this card out. I definitely want to max this card out because this motherfucker is good. But I don't think you really need to max out Overload. And I also don't think you really need to max out Energy Drain. And you really don't need to max out the Fitness either. So by leaving them at like lower levels and stuff, it's not a big deal. Alrighty guys, so that's pretty much the build. Now I'm going to show you the gameplay. And of course, I'm going to do a combo team. I have to do it with this guy. And we're going to have actually multiple of this motherfucker. Because if you can have actually like four of this guy, it's fucking crazy. Like he is the best motherfucker for combos like you can just get so many combos and they will feed off each other it is absolutely insane but you can also team him up with other older builds that will also do extremely well so he is amazing definitely one of the best classes in the entire game but let's go ahead and get started with this gameplay and blow everything the fuck up Alrighty guys, well this is going to be the gameplay, and it's going to be a little different today. I decided to go ahead and add in some extra waves, because there's actually a lot to talk about, besides the fact that this Ngara is amazing. I also want to talk about the new patch as well. So, let's go ahead and get started with the Ngara, because you can probably already see that this is really ridiculous. I was talking about before that, sometimes this power regen perk will stack. And you will see it in the gameplay, there is no doubt about it. Sometimes it's just going to cool down fairly quickly, and other times it's going to cool down extremely quickly, 
where it's practically like a half of a second or a second for your cooldown and that is amazing especially if you're trying to do combos now in this gameplay we're gonna have two of the new Angaras. we're gonna have an Asari Sentinel which is the combo queen and a Krogan Engineer which I think that's pretty much one of the best setups for a tech combo team. Now the thing is, I want to make it very clear that it is not that important about your weapon because you're going to be doing a lot of damage with your powers. But whatever weapon you decide to use, you need to make sure that you can actually kill the enemy. So if the combo doesn't kill, which tech combos generally won't kill unless you're doing multiple combos and you're blowing everybody up, you need to shoot that enemy to death, make sure that that enemy dies because that's going to trigger your perk which is going to allow you to get your powers back faster and allow you to do more combos. So it's extremely important that anytime you hit a target with a combo, you make sure that that target will die so you can go ahead and trigger your power cooldown. Now once you have that, I definitely recommend immediately finding a target and casting both Overload and Energy Drain. Like I said before, I am not a big fan of actually charging Overload because it actually takes some extra time and you're not going to detonate multiple explosions or anything like that. And it does do a little bit more damage when you do that. But in the end, I just think that with this kind of build, you want to spam the power as much as possible to, to do as many combos as possible. Now against the Remnant, which is what we're fighting obviously, this build is extremely good. The only time that you have any trouble killing an enemy sometimes might be of course with the Destroyers and the Nullifiers. But that's where the incinerary ammo really comes in handy because the fire explosion will do a shit ton of damage to armor targets. Now this build works extremely well against every faction. I tried it against every single one. I don't think it has a weakness. It does good especially against shields and against of course the remnant because they're robots and you can get bonus damage versus synthetics and things like that. So I would definitely say that maybe against the remnant it's the best. But at the same time, you can use it against pretty much anything. And you don't have to have a combo team to make this work. Now, if you have the combo team, it's going to make it easier on yourself because your teammates can also detonate your combos. This is an extremely important point here. You have to understand that as long as the enemy is hit by a combo that somehow you are involved in, it doesn't matter if your teammate sets it up or if you set it up or if your teammate detonates it or if you detonate it, as long as you are in that combo somewhere and then you go ahead and kill that enemy even if you shoot the enemy or if your teammate kills the enemy it does not matter how that enemy dies you will trigger this perk to get this insane cooldown so this perk is fucking broken i really do believe that i don't know was this intentional or not it definitely is nice because it makes this motherfucker worth being ultra rare because if this perk worked the way that it says, which is you have to kill the enemy with the explosion, well guess what? You're doing fucking tech burst here. They're not very powerful, they're not likely to kill. So if it worked that particular way, I don't think this build would be all that great. It would be good, but it wouldn't be great. Where right now it is great because of the way that it works. So I really hope that this is what they were going for and they just worded it wrong, which Bioware, they do have this tendency to sometimes do that, where they say one thing in the text and it ends up working out totally different and sometimes it's bad and sometimes it's good and in this case it's extremely good so this build is fucking ridiculous there is no doubt about it you can see it in the gameplay the only thing sometimes that can happen is you can fuck up your combo and what i mean is this sometimes you will see an enemy you'll hit it with the power and then guess what you didn't fucking do the combo so now you actually have to sit through the entire recharge and that is a bitch now remember you get a bunch of recharge bonuses like 55 percent from just your fitness tree and your training tree so that's really nice but at the same time you really want to be able to spam your powers as much as possible so it's really important in my opinion that when you see an enemy you want to first start off by doing your combo you want to do energy drain and overload or vice versa it really doesn't matter on which one you do first to be quite honest but you do both of them, you get your combo, you shoot that enemy to death, and then you try to get more combos. And hopefully you can actually get your perk to trigger multiple times and get this insanely fast cooldown because it has to be stacking. If you are watching this, you can see it. Sometimes it's cooling down normally because I fuck up the combo. Sometimes it's cooling down pretty fast. And other times it's cooling down extremely fast. So that is 100% stacking, I definitely believe that.
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking about this new Ingara for a second. Let's talk about this patch just quickly. Now, the deal is, I don't have the patch notes in front of me. In fact, it's kind of fucking annoying to find them. I was looking the patch notes up, and apparently Bioware, when they released their patch notes, they had an old version of the patch notes, and then they had an updated version where they actually fucking told you what they did, because the original patch notes really don't go into great detail on what they did. They tell you, okay, we did this and we did that, but they didn't actually, like, make it clear on everything they did because they actually did a lot. Believe it or not, they actually did buff some weapons, and I don't know what they were because I can't find the fucking notes. But the main thing that they didn't actually tell you they did, that they did, is that they went ahead and they fucking updated the Krogan Rage. And that is amazing. I've been complaining about this with the Engineer, and the Gladiator, and even sometimes with the Mercenary, although the Mercenary was really good. Same with the Vanguard. I thought the Krogan Vanguard and the Mercenary were pretty damn good, and I thought that the Engineer and the Gladiator were kind of lackluster. Now with the update to Rage, all of the Krogans are extremely good, because they have fucking totally redid that entire fucking tree. And it is so much nicer now because it works a little bit like Mass Effect 3 where as long as you get rage you automatically will have health regeneration and it's 200% by the way so that's fucking ridiculous you will always be regening your health back to full and that will just make you more beefy because the Krogans have a lot of health although they did not actually increase the base health that you have they went ahead and did increase the percentage that you can get so it did go up, but not that dramatically. I still think that Krogans should have at least a thousand health, which if you go into the tree and you go for all of the shields and health, you can get about a thousand health, no problem. But at the same time, you can't really like rely on that. If you're going for like a melee build, you're probably not gonna have the 1000 health. One of the things that they also did, which was fucking crazy, they went ahead and changed the way that melee works. Remember back in the day when they nerfed the melee, I said, you know, Bioware, I think you fucked up because the melee builds are going to fucking suck now. And because of that, guess what? No one's gonna wanna do a melee build. And what's the fucking point? Because they've been nerfed and you guys don't want people doing melees. And the big problem with the melee builds at the time was the Juggernaut Shield. I was saying this. They released the Juggernaut Shield. It was amazing. Everybody was using it. And it made the melee builds much more powerful. The power sucked in the game. The weapons didn't do that great. So the melee builds were fucking dominating. But they went ahead and they changed the way the powers work. They changed the way the weapons work. And everything's a lot better now. So melee is kind of like off to the side. No one gives a fuck anymore. So they went ahead and they changed the value of the melee damage for a lot of the classes or the different type of melee weapons. But the biggest one in my opinion is the Krogan headbutt. Holy fucking shit. They pretty much doubled the damage that the headbutt does. So it used to do like 340-ish. Let's just say that. I don't know the number exactly, but it's around that point. And now it does almost 750 fucking damage. Or I think it's 730 damage now. That is fucking crazy because when you increase the base, all those percentages that you will get from the Rage Tree will increase that dramatically. And I have seen the Krogans on gold one-shotting with the headbutt basic enemies. And that is without any of the melee perks, just going for all of the defense perks and still being able to one-shot the basic enemies with the headbutt. The Krogan Vanguard melee build is fucking real right now. If you guys wanna fucking go and wreck everything, try out the Krogan Vanguard again. Because the Krogan Vanguard was always good. Even when melee sucked, the Krogan Vanguard was still pretty fucking good. But now, with the increase to the base damage of the headbutt, plus the speed of that headbutt, plus all the melee bonuses you can get, holy fucking shit, that build does some serious damage. So if you want to have some fun with a build like that, go and do it. Same with the Gladiator. Now, the Gladiator does not have the headbutt, 
but the gladiator has the hammer which was also increased so it actually does fucking work now i think they also went ahead and increased the radius of the hammer so now when you're in a group of enemies you will actually hit multiple enemies and that's really really nice now one of the things i have to be honest about though i think they might have overdid it with the headbutt that headbutt is so fast now the hammer i get it it's ultra rare it should do really good damage it should have nice aoe to it it should fucking wreck but one of the things that I think it's just kind of stupid is the headbutt does almost as much damage as the Asari sword. Which, by the way, now can actually one-shot all the basic enemies. So that's fucking great. And the Asari melee build is much better on the duelist. But at the same time, like I said, the Krogan fucking headbutt does almost the same amount of damage as that sword. It's really not that far off. I just think that might have been a little overboard. I think that the Krogan headbutt could have had maybe like a hundred less damage i don't know so right now like i said the krogans are fucking ridiculous the rage tree is not all about melee though you can set it up for defense and it fucking is incredible one of the big things they did was they went ahead and changed it so that if you want rage you don't actually have to melee the enemies now you just have to kill them and it has to be in a close range which you can actually increase with one of the perks to be like 15 meters so 15 meters is pretty fucking far to be quite honest so on the engineer you can totally get away with being more beefy now and not fucking dying as much and that is incredible because you should always have your rage when you're playing the Krogan, all you gotta do is just kill enemies. You can shoot them, you can use your powers, it does not matter how they die as long as you are in the close range. And you get so much damage resistance now that it actually will keep you alive. So having that small amount of shields is totally okay. And they also have insane health regeneration now. So they do have a nice amount of health and you can easily get your health back no problem with the Krogan. So, Overall, the Krogans now are a lot better. I really do like that update. I think that the headbutt, they might have did a little bit too much base melee damage increase because the Asari sword should actually be like insane. Also, this new class has a unique melee as well. It has the calf melee from the single player. I don't ever use this melee because there's no fucking point, but I'm sure it's actually pretty fucking awesome. I did use it and looked at it and I was like, wow, that looks fucking awesome. It's like a sword as well, I believe. It's a Kef sword. So yeah, that's really cool. I mean, there's a lot to talk about with the patch, but I don't have the notes. I can't fucking find them. And I can't think of any other major change because there's a lot of little tiny things. But I think that that whole rage deal, that's really good. And I'm gonna have a lot more fun now playing with his Krogans because they're not so fucking squishy. And on top of it, they are melee gods. There is no doubt the Krogans are the best melee. Like, it's fucking crazy, man. And I think I'm going to be coming out with another Krogan Vanguard build pretty soon here. I wanted to update that build for a lot of reasons. It was my very first video I did on this game. And on top of that, I didn't have the maxed out card at the time. I didn't do the melee build. But I really want to show a new weapon that came out, which is the Rieger Carbine. If you guys don't know, the Krogan Vanguard was one of the best builds, in my opinion, in Mass Effect 3. And the build in Mass Effect 3 was the Rieger Carbine on the Krogan Vanguard. That's basically it. It was a simple build. You just flew around as a Krogan Vanguard and you just shot everything with the Rieger Carbine and you could headbutt some enemies and stuff like that. And that's pretty much the same build now that I'm using on the Krogan Vanguard. I think the Piranha is a really excellent gun for the Krogan Vanguard as well. I just really think the Rieger Carbine is fucking awesome because it's classic. And you will see because I will definitely do probably a fun with guns with the Rieger Carbine. And when I do that, I will go ahead and show my updated version of the Krogan Vanguard build. So be on the lookout for that. That should be my next video on here. But this Angara, guys, is incredible. I hope you can see it in the gameplay. This motherfucker does some serious work. The main deal, though, is you have to kill that enemy whenever you do a combo. And one of the issues that I have found is that if you do that combo on a bigger enemy like a Berserker or a Nullifier, well, it's kind of a problem a little bit because what will happen is you will actually have to put a lot of bullets into them to kill them because they're kind of bullet sponges and that can take you like a little bit of a minute. So in my personal opinion, I think the best thing to do against the bigger armor targets that won't die as fast is to shoot them first with your gun, set up a fire explosion, 
detonate the fire explosion, get the tech explosion, and then kill them. If you do it that way, you will actually kill them really quickly and it will allow you to keep doing your combos. And it's just actually a really good thing to do because I kind of hate them for that reason. Like when I'm using this build, I start to like fucking be a little greedy where I get so used to like being able to spam my powers like so fucking much. And I'm like, God damn, this is so fucking awesome. And it's so much fun too when you're just doing a ton of combos. Then you run across that one big enemy that will fucking not die. And you're like, what the fuck? Alrighty guys, that's gonna pretty much do it for the video. I really hope that you have enjoyed it and it has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? Be sure to subscribe for future videos and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day and peace!